This is St. Lawrence Academy Schools and Colleges Horizon Campus, a home of virtuous ladies. Well, today we are here to debate with our Lady of Africa Mukono. My name is Kenjo Rishila, Kugonza Kochida, Loku Sessionel, and Nahoya Rezet. Hello everybody, I'm Lomodesto Homa from Our Lady of Africa, here to discuss out the motion against the hosts that state as, the rising, as a result of the rising cases of suicide and gun violence in the country. This house seeks to blame it on the lack of a minimum wage policy. Here with my teammates, Tukashawa Deniva, Rebecca and Chisache Mark. We are the Olamians. We are always winners and never losers as we are going to come out from here with victory. If not victory, but what else apart from victory? Expect from us fire and never water because now we are always hot and never cold. Just know we are always the winners and we are always going to take all of Africa the proudest school in the whole country over the next country. We are so glad to be here with each and every body, our fellow students, and above all, we are so grateful to the High School Crossfire organization that they've given us this great and beautiful opportunity for us, we as a young generation, to come up and speak of matters that even the adults in Parliament are able to speak about. And we are so glad and so very much expectant, and we believe that what we are going to speak is literally going to help and benefit us and even the world at large our country. Thank you. House Rules Each speaker has five minutes. The first and last minutes are protected. The judge will ring a bell to signal the protected time. The bell will ring continuously after five minutes. My name is Kenji Rishila, the first speaker from the farmer side. As the motion says that as a result of high rates of suicide and high cases of gun violence, more so by men in uniform. This house believes the lack of minimum wage legislation as the major cause. Now, as steamer farmers, we would like to go in the core understanding of this motion, basing on it on the understanding of the minimum wage legislation. It means putting a standard amount as the minimum wage. Now, how is this implemented on us, the side of the affirmative? We are going, it's going to be based on the cost of living on a, of a particular year and helped by the Ministry of Finance and supervised by the Ministry of Labor and Development that will help to actually supervise that this law or this legislation is implemented into action. Now, for the purposes of this debate, men in uniform are going to be called the security personnel and our parameter is going to be based in Uganda. Who are to the security personnel that are receiving low wages compared to what they do. Now, we as a team of farmers strongly believe that the lack of minimum wage legislation is the major cause of suicide and high cases of gun violence into this debate. Now, panel, I want us to walk this journey of a man called Sechitoliko. Sechitoliko, yes, is a police officer or a guard of a certain rich man called Mr. X. Mr. Sechitoliko is paid 100,000 shillings monthly. But look at Mr. Sechitoliko. He has eight kids. He has a wife. These children have to go to school, right? The wife has personal needs. Of course, women plant their hair, work on themselves as a woman. Even this man also himself, he has needs as a man to clothe himself and also look good, to provide food to his children. But in, in this instant, he's not given enough money. Why? Remember in this rich man, he does this or gives a certain amount to this security personnel because there is no um, legislation on the minimum wage. Like he's able to give this security personnel the amount he wants because there is, not, there is no limit to the amount given to this pers personal security that was given to. Now, let's look at this way of Mr. Sechitoliko is give, uh, Mr. Sechitoliko is able to express his right. This, when Mr. Sechitoliko sits down and analyzes the issues that have been affecting him, he realizes that actually his boss pays not him enough salary. He will sit down and actually resort to, to think that the problem actually is his boss because the boss has the money but he's not paid enough. Meaning, he, as soldiers, they believe that to eliminate the problem, he'll be forced to eliminate the problem. Now, what are we trying to say, Pano? If there was a rule or there was a minimum wage legacy that actually maybe says that this security personnel should be paid 800 and above, meaning that boss or personnel or person cannot go, can go above 800,000 or 800 or 800,000 strictly, depending on the work that they do, but 800 and above or 800, not below. So we as team affirmatives, what you're trying to say that if there is a legislature on this minimum wage, wage discussion, dear panel, it will be able to bring out this person to be served. Now, what are our arguments? There is financial stress, income inequality, and exploitation. It will be explained furthermore by my second speaker. Now, the reason why we argue about financial stress, when you look at this person's 
um, um, personal security or personal, personal, they are exploited when there is no minimum wage legislation. And we as SEMA farmers put all the blame on that because if they have not paid enough or if there is no that legislation, it's going to give an opportunity for actually bosses to exploit these people because at the end of the day, there's no law that governs the payment of these workers. Well, if there is no law, I can pay the worker 100,000, but take in instance the work that person does, the magnitude that person does, it will look so unfair if there is no law or legislation that is put on this minimum wage. As we team um, affirmative say that why we based on this blame? Because there is going to be financial stress, income inequality, and exploitation. As I said before, they will be expounded by my second speaker. I rest my case. Table of jury, the two antagonistic sides. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Lomodesta Holmoth, privileged to be here to debate the motion that states, as a result of high rates of suicide and 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 high cases of gun violence, more so by the men in uniform, this house blames the lack of a minimum wage legislation as the major cause. First, I would like to pose a question to the farmer's side. It is, did you know that in Uganda today, there exists a minimum wage legislation? So, information from the Uganda Legal Information Institute states that as of, first, as of June 2023, the Minimum the minimum wage legislation, which was proposed in, on the 23rd of June 2017, was validated and is now into effect. This, the current minimum wage legislation in Uganda states that is a minimum wage of 130,000 shillings. To your information, currently, the, the pay given to the men in uniform is above this minimum wage. Therefore, the minimum is obeyed because a private is earning it rejected. A private is earning a total of 385,279 shillings, whereas an LDUF is earning more than 150,000 but less than 200,000 shillings. There, this information is from the Ministry of Defense website. Therefore, the cases of please rejected. They they even went on and failed to give us the current status quo. The current status quo is there are cases of suicide and gun violence, but it's only and majorly amongst the low-ranking officers. Among the high-ranking officers, these cases are, have not been seen as per now. This, this clearly indicates that the lack of a minimum wage legislation is not the major cause of this phenomenon. Therefore, we as the Uganda rejected, we as the Uganda police force believe that it is, it's not this that brings it, but it's the income inequality gap. Even though this minimum wage legislation is, exists, or they keep pushing this minimum wage legislation from 130,000 and further, it's going to keep, the, as long as the ratio and the difference between what low-ranking and high-ranking officers earn remains, this income inequality gap is going to keep there, and instead it may keep growing. Because, to your information, did that for every 38,527 shillings a private earns, a general earns 200,000 shillings? Did you know that for every 216 shillings a low rank security guard earns the 745 shillings? And we define men in uniform not only as the police, officer and police, police officers and the army, but we also define them as security guards and others. So we as the Uganda police force, we have a duty, a sworn duty of ensuring overall security and public safety within the borders of this country. Therefore, that is why we believe that we are the best people to solve this problem, because we work with sister forces like the army, but these forces work within the borders of Uganda under our supervision, because it's not their literal duty to do that, and it is only under us that they can perform such roles. Research by Macquarie University has indicated that mental illness, this, that people and men in uniform face a problem of post-traumatic stress disorder. Therefore, these people, this, the causes of this is not necessarily the income, but it is due to the drug abuse among the people in the army. And the work, these people, these men in uniform go through various work. They work in very many stressful and traumatic conditions. These problems are left out of the spotlight, especially the mental illness issue, which should be now considered as one of the major causes of this the major, as the major cause of this phenomenon. Therefore, as the police force, what we plan to do is want our police officers and our officers to 
have mental stability checks regularly so that we ensure that these people are in fit working conditions. The psychiatrists will advise us on what to do if these people are fit for duty or they are not. We also plan to improve on, their working, on the working conditions and on many other things we shall do, including close monitoring of the firearms and pre prohibiting drug ab and alcohol abuse. I beg to rest my case. This is the High School Crossfire. We'll be back in a minute.